Welcome to VTU eShikshana program. Uh, my name is Dr. Prakash Kayar. Uh, I was uh, talking about pneumatics and its applications along with uh, different circuits and other things. So in the last class we have uh, discussed about uh, directional control valves and I said about uh, uh, what are the different types, position, how uh, different types of uh, uh, ports and positions which are available in uh, directional control valves. I will be continuing, continuing the same class uh, with the directional control valve and its application now in this session. So uh, in the last class we were uh, talking about uh, directional control valves, so valve examples. So uh, uh, we showed, uh, we showed uh, these type uh, of valves that is directional control valves 4 by 2, 5 by 2, 5 by 3 valves in the last class. So now I will be moving on to uh, 3 by 2 with uh, 1, 2 that is uh, pallet set pressures which are given to the valve. Here which is a solenoid uh, operated manually reset valves. If you observe the symbol here, so this is a manual resetting uh, possibility which is given, this one shows the manual resetting and the air as a pilot and solenoid operated. So again 5 by 2, it, if you observe here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 5 ports, 2 position, 5 by 2 solenoid operated, manual reset type of valves. So uh, with spring written, so that is the uh, type of the valve. And in the subsequent uh, figure, we have shown set reset type of valves, which is also called as memory valves normally. So you can find 1, 0 and 1, 2, uh, they are acting as a set and reset signals which are provided to the valve here. It is a 3 by 2 way valve with uh, set and reset conditions. So uh, again 5 by 2 way valve. Here the number of ports are 5 and position is 2. So that is the different directional control valve with 3 by 2, uh, 2 position with set reset, uh, 5 by 2 with set reset. This is electrically operated with manual resetting and this is a spring written type uh, in the first figure. Now as I told there are different types of uh, actuations possible. So that is method of actuations. So method of actuations is mechanically we can do it. So in the mechanical uh, generally some, some valves we can have uh, uh, with a uh, manual uh, general push uh, operation buttons like this, push buttons, levers, uh, dent detent type of levers, we call this as a detent type of levers which can hold that position, okay. that is called as a detent type and foot pedal type. In some cases, uh, uh, the pedal like element will be given to press, it allows, makes the operator to press easily, comfortably uh, with some kind of thing. So that is why we use a foot pedal uh, operation type also in certain applications and spring written type. So in the spring written type, uh, you can find a spring on that side, particular side where we are taking the help of the spring to push back and uh, spring centered, if both the side springs are there, then we call them as spring centered valves and roller operated and uh, idler roller, we also call it as idle roller type, written roller type. So these are the types of actuations that are possible. So depending upon the actuation, manual, mechanical or electrical actuations are allowed in which we can have all these steps, foot pedal, spring written, push button, all those kinds of varieties are available in this. In pneumatic again, a direct pneumatic actuation which is also shown by a symbol like this, indirect pneumatic operations which is shown by a symbol like this and uh, pressure release type 
arrow is outward here. If you observe here, the arrow is outward in this case. So, uh, these are the three different types of pneumatic actuations which are possible. And electrical, we have a single solenoid, on one side only you will have a solenoid and also you will have a double solenoid here one and here one. So, there, there is a double solenoid okay. and in some cases combined, combined means it can have a one or the other combined together. So, that is double solenoid and pilot operation. So, double solenoid with pilot operation, it is combined now. Okay. So, like that we can uh, say manual override, this is manual reset or override, we also call it as override, you can press and on or reset. Okay. Manual override is shown by those kinds of symbols. So, manual override with pilot and with electrical. So, that means it is a combined one, combined one. So, this is how the different methods of actuations are being classified. Now, we will move on to uh, how these walls are being constructed, what are the different uh, types of constructions which are available. So, we have understood about the wall and uh, different position, ports, configuration, all those things and actuation types. Now, we will move on to constructional features of the DC walls. So, in the constructional features, design and constructional features, the directional control walls are available in different types of constructions. The first one is puppet type, puppet type of walls we call them. In the puppet type, again we have a ball seat type and disc seat. Here the ball will move up and close or open the wall. Here a disc kind of element will open and close the wall. Here in the ball you have a contact between the surfaces or less. Here in disc a large ceiling area will be there. So, that is the difference between a ball seating and a disc type of seating. So, the next is slide valves. So, if you take the slide valves, so this can slider within the certain limited constrained areas. So, and then we have a suspended disc type of valves, so which are uh, also used in certain applications, not extensively, but still we use a suspended disc type. There are uh, uh, some companies which make on these only, Afghan and other companies, they are mainly working on the suspended disc type of valves. Now, let us uh, check what is the puppet type of valves and how a ball seated and a disc seated valves can be differentiated here. So, in the ball seated valve, they are inexpensive and relatively small and insensitive to dirt and operated manually or mechanically. In case of a disc C type of valves, as I told, the disc will have a large ceiling area, large offers a large area and hence lift required is small, time of response is good insensitive to dirt and can be actuated manually, mechanically, electrically or pneumatically. So, these are the different types of uh, mechanisms that can be adopted on the disc type. Now, if you want to select the uh, valves, directional control valves. So, selection of a particular uh, directional control valve depends on the following factors. Uh, that is actuation force, leak tightness what we can have and ease of servicing maintenance is also an issue. So, we have to give lot of importance to it, how easily we can do a maintenance of the valves. So, that becomes a important. For example, if you take a, a, a seated valves, the ceiling area has to be uh, uh, perfectly uh, grinded or removed, grinded and then checked for its flatness and then assembled. If the some variation has occurred, then it cannot be easily maintained. 
we have to have a sufficient time given for checking all those flatness between the mating surfaces and other things and then only we are able to uh, fit the wall back with a perfect ceiling again. So, this is how uh, the maintenance also plays a major role there. So, travel length of the wall that is when you work with the wall, wall opening and closing, how much the travel has happened to do that kind of thing, size and cost. So, these are the parameters that has to be considered while selecting a directional control wall. In, the, in this slide, uh, we have shown you a ball seat type of uh, a wall. So, here you can see the wall here and a seating arrangement. There is a spring inside the work, the port 1 pressure port and uh, uh, port 2, this is a port 3. Okay? So, uh, you can remove this and set this and uh, as you give a pressure from this side, it can open and close and the ceiling area is a ball type. Okay. So, that is why this is referred to as ball type of walls. Okay. Uh, this type of walls often used for a as a single input wall either with a push button operation or with a limit switches to uh, work with the cylinder positions and the spring loaded ball initially blocks the supply port 1, it is blocked here. Output port is connected to the exhaust this is connected to the exhaust, uh, to the exhaust port 3, which is in turn have a internal connection. No actuation, the supply port is connected to the output port 2. Okay? So, it is sealed here. Now, yeah, once it gets lifted, it can connect to the 2. So, that is how the motion of the valve will takes place. Whereas, in disc seated type of valves, if you observe the difference here, here a ball was there, here a ball type of ceiling was there. In my next figure, we have a disc type of seals. You can see a disc type of element, which is ceiling like this, a large surface areas. So, in this case also, this is your pressure port and this is your exhaust port. So, which in turn connected to port 3, 2 is connected to port 3 inter internally like this. So, this has been set now with a spring force and as your uh, this increases, this lifts up the seal and gets connected with the port 2 and 3. So, 3 by 2 wave valves with this type of seating normally closed, this is normally open. So, you can see there is a small open, this is here it is closed, the difference between this and this is shown here. Okay? So, this is how we can uh, have a NO or NC type of valves in these kinds of valves. Other type of valves which is extensively used is spool type of valves. In the spool type of valves, you can see a larger diameter and smaller diameter uh, spool with a larger and smaller diameter at different sections like this. So, and which which in turn when we move inside like this linearly, it can close and open the different ports according to the requirement. The ports here are this A, B, P, R, S, all those things are the ports. So, we can open and close the ports by moving this spool rod inside the assembly, the space constraint space given. So, as you move this, so the uh, ports gets closed and open according to your moment, how do you execute. So, uh, this is called as a spool type of valve. The figure shows 5 by 2 spool type of valve. Here the number of ports is 5 and the positions that you can get is forward and reverse. So, that is why we have called this as a 5 by 2 type of spool valves. The last type here, one more uh, different types of valves which are used extensively in pneumatics is uh, disc type of valves that is suspended disc. We call this a suspended disc uh, because which is kept like this, the discs are kept like this 
and which moves here and there to close and open the valve. So, uh, here if you observe this is again a 5 by 2, 5 ports, 2 position. So, 5 by 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, there are 5 ports, 2 position can be executed using this valve. So, that is why the symbolically it is represented as 2 position valve. Okay? And with a uh, 12 and 14 set reset uh, connections, air connection ports which are given to the valve. As you move, uh, the air will move here and the valve position gets changed to the other position. So, from position 1 to position 2, you can supply the air to this port and change that. And when you supply the air from 1, 4, again you can change the position and the valve will move to the next position. So, 2 and 4 motion can be executed using these kinds of valves. Again, in the uh, suspended disc type of valves, the other type is uh, shown here again with a 5 by 2 uh, type of valve, a suspended disc type of valves. So, there are different types which are available. So, so far we have understood uh, what is valves, directional control valves and why we use the directional control valve and what is uh, port and uh, what is position and how do the symbol of uh, uh, valves being represented like 4 by 2 way, 5 by 2 way uh, or uh, any of the configurations, how do we recognize that valve as a solenoid operated uh, or uh, manually operated, those things we have completed. Now, we will start working with few example cases, how do we use these valves in the uh, circuit part, in the application part. Let me start uh, of controlling a single acting cylinder using a valve here. So, just let me say direct control, here the word direct control. So, direct and indirect control is a one important area student uh, has to understand what is the meaning of direct control and what is indirect control and how a simple circuit is being drawn for a direct and indirect control uh, in your uh, circuits. So, the figure shows a direct control single acting cylinder. As I told you, this is a spring is there, only one port is there here, that means it is a single acting cylinder. Okay? So, in this single acting cylinder, in this single acting cylinder, now we have to uh, move this to and fro using a valve. So, I am using a 3 by 2 way type of one valve, push button type of valve that is 1S1 is my push button type of uh, this valve which is used. So, by using this now I have told you the triangular symbol represents the source. So, that is our air supply. So, air is coming here. So, normally closed here. So, air will be stopped here because of its physical nature of the valve. It is closed. So, hence it is it will travel up to here. When you want to uh, in this particular condition. Now, suppose if you connect this to this 2, 2 internally connected to 3, 3 is your vent, 3 is your vent. So, all the air which are there in this side of the cylinder will move to vent. So, will get connected to the vent. As a result, the spring will push this cylinder back. Spring will push this cylinder back. So, it will be it is re retracted position. So, when I press this 1 S 1, so that is what shown here in the second figure. When I press this thing, wall. Okay? So, let me take uh, this now, see this arrow mark. So, this represents pressing. So, when I press this wall, I am changing the position. So, I am changing from this position to this position. Observe this, I have changed from this position to this position. So, now the air source gets allowed to 2, that means to this port, this port. So, the air will travel to this side, this side of the cylinder. 
as a result it pushes the cylinder forward compressing the spring so the spring is there the forward motion, motion will takes place uh, by compressing it compresses the springs and moves forward so if you take out this air now by releasing your hand so the spring will push that back so and the cylinder will retract at that condition so uh, a single acting direct control of this single acting cylinder so now why we call this as direct control directly input element is connected to an end element and by pressing the input element you are getting an output so that is why this is called as direct control so no need to uh, take any of the middle conditions or this so just an input gives an output here there is no middle elements in between so that is like no brokerage you are directly meeting the customer and buying something so that's how the direct control will work for you now in the second figure now i am showing an indirect control of single acting cylinder so what is this indirect control how it differs if you observe i have a wall similar to the earlier case 1s1 1s1 and i have used this wall to send the air to a, an another wall control wall okay uh, by sending uh, to the air to this one two so that means if i send the air to this this will make the change in position and allows the air to the subsequent stage so that means in between there is a control element so hence we call them as indirect control hence we call them as indirect control so if i observe now if i observe now if i press this 1s1 what will happen if you observe if i press 1s1 the air is normally closed it was normally closed here na so no air allows allowed to port to after pressing this gets connected to this that is one gets connected to two you can see that here one gets connected to two so two means the air from this port two will go to this valves that is a control valve so for the one two port of the control valve so which in turn changes the position here and allows the air to travel to the cylinder so this is how uh, we are making the air to pass through a control element so uh, that is why we call that as an indirect control now you have understood direct and indirect indirect control so indirect and direct control are uh, some measures of safety that we take so always we used to prefer to control it automatically through an indirect method so that is how we we go for a indirect control in many cases now i am trying to tell you how the memory wall works for you what is a memory wall a memory wall means you can check it here this is the wall in this wall you can see there are five ports two positions and uh, set and reset uh, ports are there with this so that means in this type of valves if i press forward button so air will travel from here when you press it one gets connected to two air will go here so when the air goes here you can set it the air in turn will go here and this gets connected to the vent side so this will make a forward motion forward motion so when i make forward button pressed so it gives you a forward motion now it remains in that position in the forward position here till till you press the return pb that is return push button till you press that is signal here whatever given will remain till you reset from the other when you pass an air to the other 
reset port. Then only this signal memory is being wiped. So, till that time your cylinder will be in that position. So, that is why these valves are called as memory valves. Something like I can tell you a, 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 some examples like this. I tell a boy to go and stand there for some time till I say. So, that means he has to keep it in memory. Sir has told to stand there till he commands next. So, reset command come. Come is the reset command now. Go and stand till I say. So, it is a type of command like that. So, that type of valve is called as memory valves. So, uh, certain reset ports are there in this case. If you press the PV button, written PV button, now you can find uh, one here was normally closed. No? When you press it, it gets connected and air will go to this side. So, this removes this from the memory and takes this as an action and it reverses back. So, forward and retract motions are being achieved using a valve called a memory valve. So, that is memory valve is a 5 by 2 way uh, valve here in this case with certain reset connections with memory as memory. So, uh, for example now what is the advantage of this valve? So, I can say now uh, I am dipping some component in a chemical. So, I can pull it down with one down call this as down now. So, till I want it to be there in the liquid chemical. So, I will allow it and I will come after that time and press this, press this. So, retract it and check whether the chemically washed or not. So, till that time it will be there in the chemical bath for that time that you have kept this push button pressed and left. Okay? So, it will keep it in memory. So, that is the kind of application wherein you have that one condition and remain in that condition and then you reset that and take the other condition. Uh, the same thing has been explained here. In order to retract the cylinder, the written push button is activated. So, that is how we, we use the set reset kinds of valves. Now, if you go one step up now, now what is that we have learnt now up to here is, what is direct control, what is indirect control, then what is memory, How? what is the advantages of memory control and now we have to understand one more word called limiting. What is limiting? Limiting is something like this, uh, in this room the wall is there, that is the end limit, nobody can cross the wall, go beyond the wall. But within that wall, I want you to go only to the edge of the board. So, that means the cylinder is able to go up to wall, but I am limiting it to uh, stop in the uh, this uh, uh, end only. This end means uh, board end only, board end only. That means I am limiting the motion of this cylinder before its end position in the middle somewhere where I want. For example, I will uh, tell you one thing, if I am uh, allowing the different sizes of balls to go down, so the si depending upon the size of the ball I can move, I need not have a more opening for every small balls also. So that means I am limiting in that condition. So the limiting kind of applications can be uh, achieved. So, by incorporating some of the elements, that is what we are going to see in this application. The following methods are commonly used to interrogate a word here we say interrogate. So, this is very important, interrogate the end position that is to stop, to tell, do not move beyond that. Okay? Use mechanically operated limit switches, it can have a roller lever or idler written roller type of levers to do that kind of uh, end checking condition. Some type it can be a sensor controlled also. So, 
in the if you are using a sensors say read sensors that is magnetically uh, magnetic sensors are also referred to as read sensors so you can use a magnetic sensors which are mounted on the pneumatic cylinders so that can help you to stop the uh, cylinders at that point of time at that place so suppose now for example you can see this i placed a, a magnetic sensor here i keeps on moving this up to here up to the here up to here so i keep moving up to here so when i reach my cylinder reaches this here so automatically the read sensor will sense it and stops it it does not go beyond that okay so that is the read sensor so uh, we can either use a pneumatic or electrical uh, those kinds of things are available even with the sensing technology okay use of electrical proximity switches what is proxy is normally as a, a boys you, you all know you give proxy to your close friend only you you never give to others in the classrooms correct na so in the same sense in the same sense proximity sensors can detect a nearby objects so we can fix up some proximity sensors when it come close to that it can detect and when it detects we give a signal to stop okay using proximity sensors we can use we can execute that using read sensors or we can execute using some roller uh, lever type of uh, limiting switches and uh, some of the other methods that we can use here so uh, also we can use a signal generator which is a pneumatic signal generators which are available to sense and take the signal and stop at that point of time so this is how the end checking can be made by using sensors or by using limiting lever uh, type of switches or by using proximity switches or signal generators so now see the application of this so if you see this now how do one can understand the what is uh, end position uh, checking so means you want to stop before what is the meaning of that so what is that we do normally if you observe this figure if you observe this figure so you can see s1 and s2 there are two elements they are normally sensors which are placed on the rod side rod side of the double acting cylinder now if it is at back end s1 is on so now what are this s1 and s2 in this particular case is s1 is a roller type of limit switch or the uh, lower roller type of valve okay 3 by 2 way valve so the advantage of roller type is as i have mounted as it moves automatically this rod presses this roller so that is why we have used the roller type here so s1 is a one roller type of uh, valve uh, 3 by 2 way valve and the another one is a s2 s2 is another roller type of valve which is kept on the uh, this position and this is at the back end this is the front where you want to stop it at the front so now how it works let us observe this air will be entering like this it is normally closed valve this is normally closed valve so air does not move forward okay so once you press s1 means initially when it its back end s1 is pressed automatically because the rod is at its back end so uh, the rod presses this s1 so air will at that point of time air gets connected to the 1 to 2 and sets 1 4 and which in turn air will move to this side the pressure air will move to this side this side air gets connected to the vent so cylinder will travel forward when the cylinder travel forward it moves and hits the s2 roller when you, when the cylinder hits the s2 ro roller again this gets pressed so the position of this gets connected 1 to 2 gets connected the air will move to the reset that is 1 to port 
here. So, it changes again gives a signal the cylinder to move back like to and fro motion of the cylinder within the distances of the limiting distance that you want to do. This can be as a uh, 10 centimeter, 15 centimeter, 20 centimeter depending upon uh, the stroke. Stroke can be 50. Suppose you, you consider now the cylinder have 50 centimeter stroke, but this distance can be any distance within the 50. So, I can set it from 0 to 20. After 20, it will move back. The next setting, I can move this roller to little ahead and at that time 0 to 30. So, I can move back at 30. So, like this, we can move any distance between 0 to end. So, and we can make our uh, uh, retraction at any in the middle as per the requirement. That is why we call them as end checking. Let us observe uh, one of the applications where we can have such kind of environment, where we use all these kinds of things. So, let us observe this. So, I am giving you a picture here, a, a vessel or a funnel you can consider. Okay and in which you have a pins or a balls or some components in it and you want to dispense this one by one. So, automatically with some conditions like this. So, then what we can do? The stroke of this cylinder, you have to choose the stroke of this cylinder. Suppose you have taken the cylinder say for x stroke, but X stroke may be much larger, but my ball size is much smaller compared to the stroke. At that time, what I can do is I can limit also. So, that is the meaning of this. So, ultimately, I want to move this forward and retraction. I want to move this to and fro to make my pins or balls to go to the next station. So, this is possible uh, with uh, some condition. So, I have taken that as an example case. So, read this carefully. Pins are to be fed to the next station, next processing station using a double acting cylinder. Feeding is carried out continuously utilizing to and fro motion of the cylinder. Feeding means allowing this to move to the next station is called as feeding. So, which is possible moving the cylinder to and fro. Okay, motion cylinder. The process is initiated. How do we start this? The process is initiated by actuating a start stop push button. So, means we will give you one start stop push button to start and stop this. So, once you start and allow it, all the balls or pins will go to the subsequent station. Once you repress that, it all can stop the total system, such a condition okay, stopped by pressing the start stop button. The process should also, read it here, the process should also, the word process should also means there is a logical word, this is a logical word, should also here refers to some logic. You have to understand whether this is an and or, or what logic it is, should also work if it should work like this, these, these words if they use, then you have to understand what is the type of the logic which is given. The process should also stop when the pins are exhausted, means if the total uh, hooper becomes empty or your funnel become empty, automatically this has to stop. We have to create such a project. For example, you are doing a uh, one system wherein uh, mangoes or apples are to be sent from one station to the other. Uh, you will start pressing. There are thousands of uh, apples or mangoes which takes time. You press and go continuously this will be working and uh, when it becomes empty, even the operator is not there, this should stop automatically. That is how we have to design a circuit for this. So, now in the next slide, I will show how we can 
do such design. If you observe this now, in this, what is that we have done? This is your input element, start stop button. This is your start stop button, stop button. Okay. So next one is pin sensor. This is your pin sensor. Pin sensor is connected in series with the start stop button. This means we have created an AND logic. This is an AND logic here. AND logic here. Okay. This is an AND logic here. So that means even though if you have pressed it, if the pins are there or the balls are there or the mangoes or the apples are not there in the hopper, in the hopper, the system will not work. If the object is present that is the apples are present or the balls are present then only then only the subsequent system subsequent system will subsequent system is your actuator actuator will move to and fro because you have a uh, roller limit switches here so here at this two ends so uh, this now if the pins are there the air can travel to this and air will go to this side and this side gets connected moves forward moves forward and goes and hits the s2 that is this and this so hits the other limiting sensor at that point of time s2 gets pressed one two gets connected reset set set reset set reset will automatically happen till your balls get become empty in the hooper automatically when the balls become empty this circuit will stop working because we have created an unlogic of the operation here in line with your input input is signal is this through this okay through this valve whereas another signal condition here is the balls or the mangoes or the apple should be there in the hooper to work otherwise there is no meaning to the hooper still without any product it is working means there is, there is a nuisance it should stop automatically that is how we can create an automation concepts using these kinds of valves and the limit switches and the uh, input elements and the actuators in total for different applications so i am showing you one simple example today in the subsequent classes, we will take uh, different types of examples uh, to make you understand the use of these valves in different kinds of circuits. I will repeat this. In this circuit, I have demonstrated that uh, the hooper is filled with some product like mango, apple or anything and you are dispensing that automatically using a one double acting cylinder with two roller limit switches. Okay, one is connected here and here. Okay, and if the balls are loaded, this system will work. Uh, otherwise, if become empty, it automatically stops. So uh, we will be uh, taking uh, such kind of examples uh, for our uh, different applications. As uh, we have a little time, I'll just continue. Uh, so there are many such examples. Uh, this is one for pin feeding device. So, we can create a different types of circuits using these kinds of valves. So, uh, we can have a pin feeding device uh, with the diff not, not only necessary to have a one, one circuit, not necessarily only uh, this has to be this has to be like this only configuration. The simplest configuration I have showed it in the first figure okay the simplest configuration that we can make we have showed it here okay with an unlogic operation how unlogic i have explained here because the process should also stop when means there is a condition of un if the process should uh, uh, not run if the balls are not that means if this is there then only the system should work there is an unlogic so logical things are embedded in the words statements which are given by the customers 
as per their requirement you have to choose the components and the total system design to make the system work for you. So, the same circuit can be made in different methods here we have taken again like this push button one stop button uh, and uh, one roller limits sensor for a pin sensor ok. I can start stop through this. So, this is a set this is a reset by stop and uh, pin sensor I have taken through a pin sensor here source. So, this is a source source will come to this. So, means if the this is pressed then only the air will go then only the air go here to the port. So, otherwise no air will go if the air goes and you have pressed the start button then only the air can connect to this system the same thing but in a different fashion we have connected here the one of the logical method is connecting it in series need not be in some cases you can use your mind. So, here we have connected the port 1 and this is your port 1 pressure port uh, to that we have connected the pin sensor the air can only travel if the pin sensor is closed. So, that means again and logic ok. So, like that you, you can create your condition along with start and stop button kept on set and reset sides of the valve ok memory valve here. But uh, the difference there is there we have used only one memory valve here we are using a two memory valve with one of the memory valve closed uh, uh, one of the position of the memory valve is closed at uh, this position port 2 is closed. What is the difference? If at all if you observe this figure and this figure. So, what is the difference? So, the different many some differences that you can find here is here we have used a detent type of switch this we call it as a detent type of switch symbolically it is shown here press it it holds that position till you repress that it will not leave that position ok it will remain in that. So, latching type we also can say this is a latching type of valve. So, uh, no need of start and stop there we have used two valves ok start one stop one, but here with detent we have single uh, detent switch we have done that. So, there are some advantages using these kinds of valves ok and in line we have connected to the sensor and directly we have fed this to the uh, S1 S2 here, but there instead of this the pin sensor is now connected in this circuit to an one more valve where uh, one more one more valve with uh, port 2 blocked. So, means we are using an additional valve here. So, but functionality wise it will work. So, you can choose depending upon your requirement and availability of valve be become smarter as the market uh, 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 different types of valves are available you can bring down your cost by choosing the appropriate valve instead of using more number of valves like this. The case one was better than this because you can reduce your cost of the circuit building or the total uh, product building cost can be reduced. So, this is how we can uh, from here it is same again we are using a 4 by 2 uh, 5 by 2 uh, valve uh, with uh, S1 S2 that is all same if you observe this this part is same only here we have made the changes ok here instead of that we have done this way. So, this is how we can uh, uh, do it it is left an individual designer to select based on the availability of the valves and uh, the idea of what he has uh, expertise will always help you to reduce the cost ok that is what I want to tell. So, here I will stop there are many such applications can be made for industry uh, rotary indexing table you want to make we can use a pneumatic to do that kind of thing. So, I suggest all the students make use of this knowledge of hydraulics and pneumatics preferably pneumatics is good for you because uh, to do your project 
it is less costly compared to hydraulics. So, you can choose the simple elements in the pneumatics and you can create your projects on your own. Simple, simple projects can be made on your own. Uh, so, that gives an enormous experience to you and you feel happy when you do a your own project with your own hands. So, I suggest all the students you can prefer pneumatics for your projects along with some mechatronics concepts also and not necessarily this has to be done like this. You can also use some electronic boards uh, like Arduinos and other things to actuate your cylinders and other things. Small, small projects can be created by you uh, and you can learn uh, pneumatics as well as mechatronics. So, this is the advantage of pneumatics. Pneumatics in hand go with mechatronics and operates with any control boards which are available in the open source also. So, this is one more advantage for you. Thank you.